So, as a matter of fact, Animal ID is a startup, and since 2011, uh, we have been dealing with this initiative because we realized that in order to reduce the number of stray animals um, by natural methods, we don't have to reinvent the wheel, but we have to. Thank you for how a lot of European organizations and European countries were dealing with this. We realized that if we identify and register every animal very clearly, we will not have such animals so gradually with time as stray animals and um, the trade and other things. And since 2011, we have been focusing on this. Uh, on the matters that uh, are related to registration and the identification of animals. And the Animal ID startup has uh, been uh, implemented and um, we are well acquainted with most, of, most people present here and it was with Natalia that we started making the first estimations of animals. We developed mobile apps to support animals and uh, this application used throughout the world and it was Natalia uh, who helped uh, with the implementation of this application, of this initiative. Of course, we did it in partnership with other organizations. For example, um, we developed the idea of uh, registration and um, keeping the registry in the shelters because most uh, uh, Ukrainian animals now are registered in this animal ID and these are animals from shelters. And also we had the tripping um, projects. Uh, we worked with partners and we did the, the tripping of animals for three years on a free of charge basis in Lviv and we also implemented a number of other social projects. But one of our main startup products is the QR token. And before the war, our startup uh, was focusing on the US market, and uh, we sold these tokens at the rate of $20, and we still do this, and it's a very successful activity. And these tokens enable us to very quickly and easily register an animal and uh, on the fifth day of the war we passed the decision that I need to go back to Ukraine and I need to support our team here with social projects. And we started our project Ovidog Leash and overnight we managed to come into agreement with partners like at the B, Oco, and Master Zoo, which is the largest retails, the largest organizations by which uh, we could actually uh, spread, spread our uh, tokens. We knew that this is not the time for earning money, so the first 20,000 tokens uh, were just given for free to the owners who could download the mobile application. Uh, approach um, a shop assistant or a um, gas fueling station operator and uh, show that the uh, animal is registered and they just scan the QR code and uh, put it on the animal's neck. So 181 southern tokens have been given uh, since the beginning of the project implementation and uh, now, in our system, we have 60,000 animals more. Uh, these are registered animals, and mainly we now also have some refugees from Mariupol, from Severodonetsk, who are IDPs and who are staying in Drohovich, and they're working with this project as well. And let me show you some stories which you have probably seen because there are a lot of happy stories, success stories, when uh, dogs were, or animals generally were lost, but then uh, the, this microchip, this QR code ID helped to um, have the animal, in this case the dog, back home. And there was a story known to the whole world. 
when uh, Russian invaders kidnapped a cat, this was Maine Coon Max, who was stolen from Bucha, and uh, on an armored vehicle he was taken to Belarus, then in Belarus he fled, and the owner hadn't seen him for about 80 days, and then she got the information, the message, about the geolocation, because volunteers found uh, him in Belarus and there was a token attack on, on him. And the first question was, so what is your attitude to our president? And then after she got the answer, gave the answer to the question, uh, she got her uh, Max cat back. And actually, this story was highlighted by CNN, BBC, and uh, it had, this story had a very positive impact on the image of the project. Here you can see the list of our projects, of uh, our partners. And when you do great things, everybody wants to partner with you. If you can really do this and do you know how to do this, so we involved uh, federal agencies. They helped us with the development of the very concept. We also involved ACO at the Bearmaster Zoo. And the first 40,000 tokens, well, there was a need for them. But then we were joined by other organizations. And they supported us financially. So they, in fact, um, covered the cost of um, Using those tokens, these were Japanese, UK organizations. So in, we found great partners who united around us, and uh, we were lucky with this. Here you can see the network, uh, how we have covered all Ukraine. Our goal was to cover on the west of Ukraine because we realized that most of all people fleeing the war were being displaced to the western areas or moving across the western borders. And uh, of course, there were a lot of animals who had been lost. And uh, uh, close to the border, you could see a lot of pets just going in crowds, in herds. And then we understood that this was supposed to be our first step. But then gradually, we started also covering uh, all item B markets. So this is not the full map because uh, Tomorrow we're going to launch our project in the region, so with the, the map will be uh, will have a better coverage. And we hope that uh, thanks to the armed forces of Ukraine, soon we're going to enter the nice Luhansk and Mariupol and, and, and maybe the Crimea. This is um, a different project, but. Um, this is also about the identification of all animals. And we have partner support. We have a lot of partners, but the first partners came from England. Uh, this is Iagar uh, company, IG company, and they helped us with microchips because, um, you know, borders were not functioning, and no sales was where possible, so they just gave us those microchips in order to help identify the animals leaving across the border, because a lot of owners were going abroad, and um, of course, it would be much more difficult to arrange this microchipping later. Uh, now we can see some under the skin microchip visual identification with the token, because it's very easy, and a loving owner will always identify his pet. And here is the contact data. I decided to make my presentation very brief. Maybe there will be some questions for me to spend more time on answering your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. Thank you for your presentation. Do we have any questions? I don't see any questions as yet. Ala, you're welcome. Ala, you have to unmute yourself. 
or you can write your question in the chat. Uh -huh. uh, so what is the best legislation on registration in the world? The best legislation is probably the migratory legislation of Scotland. And it is the most ideal one because it doesn't have a unified database, but um, we present the country in the European database, and we are very active members, of, and we are members of different commissions, and we help uh, develop legislation in Ukraine. So this is um, the topic that I've really worked with a lot. Uh, in Europe, not everything is that good with um, identification, though everybody is aware of the problem of animals, but a great number of, people, of animals are chipped but not registered, and this does not protect animals um, against being lost. But there are also some cases when, for example, a country tries to make all the animals registered, but this doesn't work because there is also some resistance, and then Scotland has taken a different way. They have developed the legislation saying that they're not going to um, have any databases and to extract those databases, but they will take the data from them, and the databases have to make that interested and owners interested in transferring this data. So this is not on compulsory basis, but on the basis of encouraging. And the percentage of registration there is really very high. And the coverage is very high, unlike different uh, European countries. But there are also countries like uh, Switzerland, the UK, uh, the registration, the situation registration is rather fine there, but uh, that is only because it has been there in place for quite a period of time. So if we take some basis for Ukraine, I would take the Scottish legislation. And here is another question. Um, the Ministry of Digital Transformations can uh, register the animals via DIA. So what is your uh, attitude to this? I'm positive about that. And if I'm helpful with this, um, I would gladly support this process. But we need to realize that registration takes is performed not just by people in general, the owners, but by veterinary doctors. If we take a token, it's easy, and you don't need DIA for that. But that is visual identification that could actually be torn away, and then it will not work. So it will not solve the problem of straight animals. It will just solve the problem of losing a pet. But um, if we want the owner not to kick the, his or her pet, uh, out of home, you need to have clear identification, and this is performed by veterinary doctor. Um, the most complicated thing that we are used to policy registration and not something that takes place on the basis of encouraging, but registration wouldn't work that way. And you will see a lot of opposition, and uh, when there was a moment of time when um, we were trying to implement this idea in Ukraine, there was a great opposition kind of revolt because it was a compulsory process and people don't like compulsory things. So I think that first there should be some programs, some incentives, like we have this in Lviv, and we realized that 30% of animals in Lviv uh, have already been identified with micro microchips. So it's better to first uh, launch that in programs and then do the implementation of the registration and identification processes. As far as DIA is concerned, it is difficult to um, elaborate the flow, the, the, the sequence of, um, within this procedure, because DIA is not about the establishment of the document. DIA is only about showing the document, showing the profile of your animal and showing that it is registered. But the very registration process is anyway going through that. So how do we make them interested in working with this? Um, 
veterinary doctors normally don't want to have any registration. They just want to have uh, animals identified. So we need to simplify the procedures and then it will work. Thank you. Any other questions? So where can we get your token for animals now? Well, uh, if you can see the map, so throughout Ukraine you can enter, you can download your mobile app, um, Animal ID, you can enter any other shop or Master Zoo, which is a specialized supermarket for animals, show the animal profile and on a free of charge basis you're giving you're being given this token with this QR code. And if, um, God forbid, you lose your pet, somebody will read this QR code and you will get the uh, location of your animal, current location of your animal. And the person who has scanned the token will also see the profile of your animal and will be able to come into contact with you. And uh, if you want to have a personalized uh, token with a label, you can actually go to the animal ID website and order it, or you can bring other partners with which we work. And just in brief, um, let me mention that we have a startup project which, is, which has the goal for every animal in the world to be identified, uh, not just in Ukraine. In Ukraine, we do that. We are rather fine with this because we have a lot of business partners who are helping us, and we have a large brand. Uh, let me not mention it, not to have any advertising, but it produces up to uh, 100,000 um, necklaces every uh, collars, dog collars every month. So they have those tokens for the code. So thanks to this collaboration with business. I think that a month, on a monthly basis, at least 100 dogs become non stray animals. So the main idea is for every animal to be registered. And for business, on the one hand, uh, this is all about their brand, their positioning. And for us, we could uh, have animals registered, identified, and then animals will not be lost. So if you have any social projects, so please have a look how you can cooperate with business, how you can actually complement business effort. Because since we are more of an IT product, and, uh, then it's easier for us to work with business because we speak the same language. And that is the precondition of our success. And I know that there are a lot of other projects which could actually get the funding not only from the IT sector, but could be helped by businesses, um, and uh, you could also help business. So that will, would be a win-win cooperation. A lot of questions. Uh, so question coming from Anna Kravchenko. Victor, to your team. And uh, my dog, whom you shipped in 2015, is sending you best questions and greetings. Um, are there any animals kept by humans that actually cannot be, ha uh, cannot have their chips under skin? No. We've got um, elephants, uh, snakes. And we had a project with the Ministry of Environment, um, so the environment uh, with the digitalization of this data. So there are no animals that cannot have it. Thank you. How do we address if a person has found a dog with a chip? How, how do we check whether the dog has the chip or not? Well, that is a weak point in the identification um, microchips. Because in order to identify this microchip, you need a special scanner. And now more than 80% of the veterinary clinics do have their own scanners. And we're now developing the scanner that um, and, and which will be given out to all vet clinics. And uh, this will be the scanner that will show you right away um, uh, that he has got the chip and the owner will get their information right away about the location of the dog. So anyway, you will need to go to the vet clinic. 
asking to scan the chip. And some utility municipal companies, like the Leaf municipal company, have a scanner, so they can also check this. But um, it may be the case that the chip is not registered. And 30% of chips in Ukraine are not registered. That is according to statistical data. Oh, I'm sorry, just vice versa. 30% of chips are registered, while 70% are not. And that is caused by the trend um, because uh, all the dogs, all the animals chipped were going to the border, so they didn't register those chips to show that this animal is uh, from Ukraine. And uh, if the owner does not um, register it, so there's, there is actually pointless, uh, it's, there is no use in um, the shipping. So if you communicate with some of your members of the organization, uh, please tell them that they need to go to the vet clinic and if there is a microchip, on a free of charge basis, you can get registered. Our database is uh, free of charge. There is also another uh, free of charge database in Ukraine. But this is the main thing what you need. There are also questions uh, related to Kharkiv, but I think that this is more the question to me about the accommodation. Suppose you have found a cat or a dog, uh, where can you send uh, him or her? Let me give the answer to Valerian. And the question to you, if there was a token, but it was lost, is there any possibility of restoring it? Well, if you have an animal registered in animal ID and you have a token, um, which is lost, quite often somebody can find this token give it back to the owner because it has a QR code. If not, then it's not a problem, just go and take the new token. And uh, there are some animals uh, that have uh, five or ten tokens on different dog colors. So a token is just one of the identifiers. And there is the dog profile or the animal profile uh, to which you can link the token, the microchip, the tattoo. And some identification. So it is important that every owner of the animal adds the maximum number of identifiers for the person, for the animal, if lost, to get back home as soon as possible. And here is another question. What about these tokens? Aren't they used in animal shelters in Ukraine for uh, tracking every animal? when the animals are staying in the shelter or after they have been adopted by families. Well, um, token is not a GPS locator, and microchip is not. You will not be able to be staying at the computer and uh, looking at the way your um, animal or pet is moving. We just uh, take the locations from the telephone which we scan, by which we scan the uh, QR code. And the chip is also only an ID number, 15 figures, 15 digits. And now, for example, in the shelter, we have a project and we want to identify using a microchip every animal in the serious shelter. That's what we did in some other shelters. And this is required for us to have very clear registration and for us to understand that in serious there is there are almost 3,000 dogs. But for example, this animal is let's say Lola, and Lola is vaccinated. All this is all digitalized, it's all in the database, and it's really too important to understand that identification is just a method. And if a, a dog has been living for many years in the shelter and uh, will never leave the shelter, so I don't think that you need to tip it. Maybe for some control within the shelter, but not otherwise. And if you 
give it over to the owner, you need to tip it and to have a token for this animal to reduce this traumatic component because quite often these dogs uh, flee, escape the owners. The stories could be different. So it's important for this person not to get a trauma um, get caught before for the second time. And you also need to control a not good face owner. So every shelter needs to tip and to identify them in some way, tokens including. Of course, we do have programs. Now we have a program which is jumping maintained during the war, but it is not very much developed. This is the program with which, together with uh, the shelter, we are um, developing the system of tokens. Um, and uh, if the token was on sale, 50% of the cost of the token was given to the shelter. I mean, 50% of the profit. Now it's not possible to work with this program very much because we have a lot of other things to do, but we will uh, still have it. Thank you. A lot of information. I think that we all need to think it over. I can see that there is another question from Yulia, right? No? Okay. So thanks a lot, Victor. And now we will have a break. We meet at 3.30 and we will have the presentation of Olha Kirilovich from the UPU organization. Thanks a lot to you. Thank you for what you are doing and I do believe that we will win.